Alright guys, after closer inspection, I think this one's on me. Uh Welcome back to the Dynamic Channel, thanks for watching. Okay, so today's video, we, we uh, discovered a little issue on the turbo of the All3 Performance Turbo Kit. I am currently running their 67 millimeter ceramic ball bearing turbo. And this video here, I'm going to actually take the turbo off to inspect to see if there's actually any kind of issue with the turbo itself. And uh, kind of give you guys full disclosure of how the kit's holding up. You know, I don't want to hide anything about the kit for you. I'm not a fanboy by any stretch of the imagination. But I just want to give you guys full disclosure and kind of see what's going on. So we're going to go ahead and uh, remove the turbo from the system itself. We'll inspect it and see what's, uh, where that oil's coming from. It may, may be simple as, something as simple as the drain or maybe a bad seal. We'll find out. So we'll go ahead and get to work on taking it out. I'll show you what we're going to have to do in order to get this turbo out of the car itself. And then we'll get it on the bench here and inspect it. All right, guys. So let's get to work. And the reason I'm actually taking it out is because I'm seeing oil. And you can actually probably see it. Let me grab the light here. There's oil down. You can see right there, those little spots. There's some down there too. That's oil. And uh, I noticed the drain line here is wet. So we're going to go ahead and um, I checked the clamp. The clamp's tight. It may not be in the right position though. So I'm going to go ahead and take the turbo out to inspect it and see if that's the actual issue. Or maybe the actual fitting itself is loose. We'll find all that out here. But that's the reason I'm taking it off here. And we'll see. If it's something more drastic than that, we'll definitely find that out once the turbo's outside the car. Alright guys, to make this job easier, as you can see, I already got this bottom coupler off and the power pipe off and everything. Very easy stuff. Just for ease of use, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove the alternator as well. At least make it to where it can swing over some more. Maybe give myself a little bit more room. Not hard to take off. Just got this long bolt here that uses a Allen socket and of course our turnbuckle here. So I'll go ahead and get the alternator out of the way as well. Just make the job easier. Alright, it's about ready to pull. We went ahead and got exhaust clamp off of course. I went ahead and vacuumed up the um, transmit or the uh, hot side here. The exhaust housing disconnected both the drain at the bottom and disconnected the feed line. And so now we got to take apart or remove these four bolts that hold the housing to the hot side. This thing will just be ready to come off. So I'm going to go ahead and attack these back here first and then but probably this one to this one last because it's the easiest to reach. Then we'll put it on the bench here and we'll get everything situated. Okay, so upon further inspection with the turbo outside the car, it is definitely this hose clamp that's causing the issue. It's definitely leaking down in there, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, loosen it up, see if the hose is still good. It's just a 5 8 hose, and if the hose is still good, I'll just re-tighten it and I'll get it in a better position. But everything else looks to be good, all the seals and everything else look, everywhere else look good. I'll clean all this up and put some new copper RTV down. So, all right, crisis avoided. That's a good thing that luckily there is no issue inside the turbo itself. It's just the drain, and that's my fault. All right, let's uh, get this thing fixed up, and we'll get ready to put it back in. Okay, so a little progress update here. Now that's much, much better. The clamp is not tilted sideways. The line itself is actually broken. I had to cut it off because it was actually snapped right here. It was actually broke. So yeah, that could have been really bad. Thank God I actually did this. So um, I did have to clock the cold side just a smidge over so I could clear that bolt right there. But now, I mean, I did lose about an inch 
um, off the total length of the hose, but I, there was plenty to begin with, so um, this one should be okay. I'm actually probably gonna go ahead and wrap this line too with some of my heat tape, so that way it's good to go. But yeah, should be ready to put back into the car. Went ahead and recleaned off all the surfaces because I'm gonna go ahead and re RTV this here and also the housing right here. Went ahead and cleaned it off, uh, scraped off any of the leftover gasket material, which there wasn't much left to begin with. And I, didn't I remember I didn't put a very thick bead of RTV on it. So I'm gonna make sure I do a generous amount this time and uh, should be good to go. So let's go ahead and get everything back into the car. We've got the engine bay all buttoned up. I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect the battery and we'll start it, check the leaks. check for leaks everything looks completely dry and I'm really happy about that so crisis averted I didn't have to worry about possibly burning down my car because I got curious about looking at that drain line and sure enough there was a tear in the line as you saw so guys if you happen to notice anything like that it really does not take much effort to tear the turbo off the system itself it literally took me about a half hour that's about it and uh, removing the alternator, definitely a big help because then you can access the bolts a lot easier. Removing the alternator uh, if you're running on three bracket kit should take you no more than probably 10 minutes. Make sure you do have the correct um, Allen head socket because it makes life so much easier than dealing with a little um, 90 degree Allen wrench. Just going to point that out right now. I went ahead and re-RTV'd uh, with a uh, copper RTV all over the hot side and also on the downpipe. Just, uh, it was there, it was in the open. I went ahead and scraped off all the old stuff, put a fresh bead of new uh, new RTV down. Should be good to go on that. Guys, so the, kind of the purpose of this video is that, um, you know, I didn't know what to expect with this on three system. And um, I'm not the grandmaster or anything about uh, in regards to on three uh, systems in general, but it's a turbo system. It's all pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple on how everything works. And um, you never know if you see oil anywhere, what could be the issue. Lucky for me, it was just the drain line. And luckily we went ahead and fixed it now because the way that was torn, it was torn towards the hot side. So if that started spraying oil all over the headers, it could have caused a fire. So definitely keep an eye on that kind of stuff. I went ahead and uh, wrapped up the drain line with some heat tape. I'm probably gonna go ahead and replace that drain line anyway because I did have to cut about an inch off to get past that torn uh, part of the hose. So I'll go ahead and take care of that off camera and stuff like that. But now it's uh, completely leak free and sealed up again. So a really good thing. Guys, just check your systems and stuff like that. I've had this kit on my car for about, I think it's going over two years now, I think. I'll have to check uh, when I post the videos and stuff like that for the install series. But um, you know, things just happen over time. The system's still been holding up very well. But uh, you never know when something might pop up, and it's always good to check it out. Again, well, it took me a half hour to pull that turbo off the car itself. And uh, the fix itself only took about 10 minutes just because I was very meticulous, making sure that the clamp was seated properly instead of being cockeyed. And uh, it was good to go. So, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, if you know anyone that would like my content, please like, share, and subscribe. Take care. We'll see you in the next video.